Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Dumas Real Estate Podcast. Well, it's happened, Monica. Real estate as we know it has been changed forever, and doomsday is around the corner. Let me guess, there's some groundbreaking policy changes. There is. And this one, unlike any other, um, is going to change the market. It's, uh, I can't understand why no one has ever thought of this before. It, uh, it's groundbreaking and uh, everyone's very excited about it. The cooling off period is coming January 1st, 2023 and buckle up because it's sure to change the market, like Denny says. We'll try not to be super sarcastic in this episode and more just educational on what is going to happen on January 1st, 2023 and what loopholes are available for buyers and realtors out there and how we think this will affect Greater Vancouver Real Estate, if at all. Right. So as many of you guys know, if you follow the real estate market, it's been a big topic of conversation um, the last few years because the market's been really hot and uh, there's been some frustration on the buy side, um, mostly like new buyers, first time home buyers, um, really frustrated and it's, it can be difficult to get into the detached market and one of the most competitive real estate markets on the planet. Um, so the answer to that is this cooling off period, which... Basically, if a buyer were to write a subject-free offer, an offer without conditions, they would still have three days to do their due diligence. They would have three days to do um, financing um, subjects, get an inspection if you'd like. Um, After the three days, you can move forward with the purchase or you can back out of the purchase at a penalty of 0.25% that would be paid to the seller. So for an example, if it's a million dollar listing that you're purchasing and you decide to back out, you'd owe the seller 2500 bucks. I think it's important to note that we do feel that there could be things that could be adjusted or standards put into place that could make the process of selling a home and offering on a home in multiple offers go better, be a little more transparent. This one doesn't really fix anything that was wrong, which is, I, I think, our... Um, our biggest concerns that we're implementing more policy that has workarounds that the local governments are selling to consumers as we're helping everyone now. Right. We're we're looking out for you. When in reality, these really are not benefiting your average first time buyer, your average young family that's trying to upsize from the condo to the townhouse or whatever that may be. Right. I really tried to, um, get in the headspace of somebody that would be really excited about this change. I found it a little bit difficult because just immediately our brains start thinking about all the mm-hmm. ways that to get around it as, as realtors, not necessarily to deceive the market, but to do what's best for our, our clients in whatever situation it may be, whether you're on the sell side or the buy side. So I kind of dove deep into what the people are saying that made this policy. And I have a quote here from Selena Robinson. She's the minister of finance. And I want you to tell me what you think about this, Denny. Oh boy. She says, too many people have been faced with giving up an inspection in order to buy a home. This is a major step toward providing home buyers with peace of mind that they deserve while protecting the interests of the people selling their homes for today's market and the future. What do you think about that? It's just propaganda. Like it, it just in no way is that the reality of what actually happens in a real estate transaction. Um, so it it's frustrating when our industry already does not have the best reputation. Uh, there's good and bad people in any industry, and that is very true in real estate. But when policymakers are um, publicly calling out an industry for being sketchy, which is basically what she's saying. Um, it's, it's frustrating and annoying, and, and I feel like it's our job to defend the good people in the industry um, via the Garbage Duma podcast. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's interesting that she says that this policy is going to give home, buy, home buyers the opportunity to do an inspection that they wouldn't have otherwise had. It's just fake. Like th- th- that's not reality. Not true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not true. So that's the that's the interesting thing about this policy is that 
It's here to protect um, home buyers, but most of the reasoning as I read through it was all fabricated. Like not having an opportunity for inspection, that's not necessarily true, or it's not true at all. Everybody has opportunity to do an inspection. I've never had a listing agent tell me my buyer can't do an inspection before an offer. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> I have. Um, oh, well, that's, I have, I've had some really difficult people to work around. But see, there you go. That's a policy. Mandatory to let people do pre-inspections. That's a good policy. The thing that I liked that the um, BC Real Estate Association proposed instead of this was a mandatory on-market days, <clears throat> right? Five days on market, seven days on market, whatever that is, before you actually accept an offer, which gives much more time to do due diligence. This three-day period, um, one, there's workarounds, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, we're just um, like we're making the transaction more complex than it needs to be in solving a problem that doesn't exist. All right. I'm really interested to see who is going to be in charge of enforcing this 0.25% uh, refund to the seller. Good luck. I mean, is, is it me? <laughs> Am I the one that has to do it? I'm really curious. Yeah. Are we like, <laughs> like what am I supposed to do? Yeah, I don't know. How, how, are, how are we supposed to How do I collect that? it? Do yeah. I collect it from the buyer ahead of time? Yeah. Do I get it afterwards? And is 0.25% a fair compensation to a seller in all circumstances? As you said that, all I think about is like old school lawyer movies where they have a guy that fixes things. Totally. We got to get one on the team. We, we're going to need yeah. one. <laughs> If anyone knows, the guy we're doing real estate team is in the market for a guy that fixes things. We're hiring a fixer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's been a bit of a frustrating process just listening to announcements on this as, you know, over the last, whatever, eight or ten months that they've been talking about it. Um, I just, I, I still am really confused about who this is helping. Because it's not helping buyers which is what they're selling it as, and it is hurting sellers. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm struggling to understand when you actually have a conversation with people that work in the real estate industry and understand how transactions actually work, um, who is this attempting to benefit? Right. So we spoke about this when this first came out, and it, it benefits experienced buyers and sellers. It damages like the new buyers, the, you know, um, the people that need the help the most. Um, it's also going to be difficult for new realtors. New realtors, people who just started out in the industry, it'll be difficult for them and it'll be difficult for first-time home buyers. Do you think it will? I know it's like, it's fun to say, and there's definitely scenarios where it can negatively affect, you know, that young couple that's buying their first condo for 600 or 700 K or whatever. Do you think realistically it's going to negatively affect them? Uh, or will the it just not do anything? I think it's more likely that it won't do anything yeah. in most cases. In most cases, most likely just it won't feel, no one will feel a change in most cases, except for us trying to collect the 2,500 whenever the time comes. Yeah. yeah. Let's maybe chat about workarounds and... and um, I mean, it is. I think it's worth noting that 0.25 percent is is a hilariously low penalty. If you're buying a million dollar home or attempting to buy a million dollar home, um, like the potential problem that this opens up is savvy real estate people offering on two or three places, getting into contracts, and then having a get out of jail free card for three days so that they can decide which one they want and which one they don't, and a $2,500 fee on a million dollar purchase is like, is, doesn't mean anything to them. No, it's, it's kind of, it goes back to the experienced purchaser, people with deep pockets. Mm -hmm. They're always going to benefit in markets like this. If you have deep pockets in BC, you're going to win. You can offer on as many properties as you want. If you've got, you know, five grand to spare, you can offer on $2 million properties and that's it, right? Instead of, buyers having the opportunity to spend $600 on an inspection before offering. That's the, that yeah. is one of the potential problems is like when our market heats up again, which is not if, it's when, in the next year or two, when a buyer was competing with six other groups to purchase a condo, a townhouse, a house, 
if that goes up to eight or nine now, what is that doing to the winning price? Well, the thing that I, I believe is going to be the most interesting is that people are going to spend more monies on properties because they can't, before you could be smart, do all your due diligence ahead of time, get your financing approved, get your pre-inspection. Now the only thing you can do to make your offer stand out would be to pay more money. <laughs> That's it. You're going to spend 10 grand extra to get your offer accepted. That's true. Versus mm -hmm. I've had many times, and I know you did too, of us winning offers where we spent $25,000 less or $50,000 less than someone. And our offer was cleaner because we did all our due diligence ahead of time. Now people are just going to have to throw money at it so that theirs gets accepted. That's it. That's all you can do to set yeah. yourself apart. I wonder if that 0.25 thing is is like flexible in any way, or is it just up to a buyer to say, you know, twenty five hundred dollars is hilariously low. It means nothing to me. It means nothing to the seller. Might as well not even be in here. I'll give you forty thousand dollars non refundable if you accept my offer. There's, there's so just, many. I, there's so many things. Yeah. The other thing to note, which is quite interesting, is. I'm not 100% confirmed on this, so tell me if you have, but it seemed like the way that this was you know, very vaguely announced a few days ago was this only applies on non-condition offers, which means no subjects in your offer. Well, that's what it appears to be. Otherwise, what would the purpose of it be? Because if you're writing an offer with seven days subjects, I mean, it could be... I, it, it could be that it's it's even after you remove subjects from the time it's a condition free offer, maybe you have three days. It didn't it could, sound like that. Yeah. So let's assume for now that it is only if you're writing a non condition offer, no subjects in your offer. Which savvy which, real estate people. It means you have subjects. If you write a subject free offer. Exactly. You have three days <laughs> subjects. So let's assume every no subject offer from January first moving on automatically has three day subjects. Now, as someone who's trying to make their offer look stronger, who's maybe lost it on a couple homes, who really likes this home, who, whatever, people who aren't concerned about the whatever fees, um, they're just going to write a one day subject removal or a hour. one hour subject <laughs> removal and then also submit the subject removal. It just, again, with how these things have, are being rolled out. It is comical how little due diligence these people that are making these policies are actually doing in terms of the reality of how a transaction gets done. Oh, for sure. A sophisticated buyer is going to know, understand all of these rules and understand how to get around them. They're going to submit a one-day subject offer with a subject removal. Just like we submit subject-free offers with a deposit attached. All of those things, it's just going to be common practice. You're going to get a pile of offers on offer day and the good ones are going to have subject uh, removals attached to them. That's it. So we're exactly where we were before. Hmm. Do you know Excellent what work, could really, could, Excellent work. you know what would really cool off the market? More housing. <laughs> it's not what this podcast is about today, but it's, it's a solution. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny that it's a pretty obvious solution and Local governments have literally no interest in in even addressing that or question. acknowledging it at yeah. all. Yeah, <laughs> they're the savior, and uh, this cooling off period will help everyone, and it's going to help them get more votes. And uh, we're very optimistic about the whole thing. No, I mean in reality, I think that's the summary right there. Is that I just don't think it's going to change anything positively for consumers uh, and it has there are quite a few scenarios where it could negatively in fact uh, impact both buyers and sellers right on the seller side if they do accept a subject free offer maybe it is with you know a newer realtor who doesn't necessarily understand the impacts of having an automatic three-day period um, if you're Offers are being void after that three-day period, and, and it happens a couple times. It's it's going to be really challenging to line up dates and plan your move. On the buyer side, there is the potential of competing against more people for a home because there is no risk involved in rating an offer anymore. Yeah, it kind of penalizes buyers that have the mentality of, 
I don't want to do an inspection before I get an offer accepted because there's lots of buyers like that out there. It definitely penalizes that mentality because if you get an offer accepted and then you do your inspection and you pay your 600 bucks for your inspection and then you decide to back out, now you're also paying $2,500 to back out. Well, I think that buyer is still going to write a subject to inspection in their offer. So I think exactly. this three day period is not going to apply to them and it's not going to trigger that 0.25% penalty. Um, so I just, I just think we're not in any different situation than we were in the past, which to me, if you're implementing some sort of policy, there should be some impact. For sure. Be exciting. I mean, we don't have a full scope of information right now of how this is actually going to work. So it'll be interesting and I'm sure you guys will hear from us on January 2nd, (laughs) but um, it's going to be exciting. I know that it'll be fun. Our clients are going to love it. They're going to love us, I guess, because we're going to figure out how to deal with it. The more I think about it, the more I'm coming to the conclusion that it's it's just not going to change the way that real estate is done. Now there's just going to be one more document submitted with an offer. So there's going to be a letter about your family. There's going to be a PDS. There's going to be a title. There's going to be any dis- disclosure documents that were shared with with buyers that are going to be signed. There's going to be an offer. There's now going to be a subject removal. Yeah. There's still going to be a deposit. So it's, I mean, I just think the way real estate is purchased in a busy market is not going to adjust in any way other than having condition-free offers and having an automatic three-day period after will probably entice people to submit an offer when they were previously on the fence. So in what, like, is there a scenario that you can think of where this would be perfect? Like this cooling off thing is going to work for someone perfectly? The only scenario I see that this is beneficial for consumers is uneducated consumers working with uneducated realtors and not knowing due diligence involved in purchasing a home. So it protects those people. Yeah, Correct. fair enough. Yep. But okay. at some point, the government has to stop hand-holding. And like, how is buying a... Why should a consumer be like have all these policies in place and have no liability, essentially? Like, sh- shouldn't at some point it be on the individual to take responsibility for their decisions. For sure. Right? Yeah. Like this yeah, is why you sure. hire a, yeah. a really good professional in any industry, right? Like if uh, hiring a good lawyer, a good accountant, uh, a good realtor, someone who does this 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a long period of time and has a track record and is very, very experienced and can guide you through those processes. But uh, just a blanket policy that is implemented by people who are inexperienced in real estate. It just, it seems right. strange. I mean, and they made it really clear that they weren't planning on asking realtors. Well, they did. Yeah, eventually. They did, yeah. <laughs> they set up a fun meeting. Everyone went, wasted, you know, four or five hours of uh, the real estate board's time. And the response was, we have no interest in listening to the real estate board because they have a vested interest in the market being busy which is uh, <laughs> hilarious. Oh, man. Yep. So we're, we're optimistic. January 1st, 2023. Um, good work, NDP. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But our, uh, <laughs> our educated <laughs> guess is that this is not going to really change anything. Yeah. It'll be exciting. We'll see. Yeah. All right. On to the next.